Hi guys, it's Miss Hubble. Today we're here and we're going to talk about um, line symmetry. This is lesson 16.4. Our I can statement today is I can recognize and draw lines of symmetry and identify line symmetric figures. So let's look at our solve and share today. It says, how many ways can you fold the square so one half fits exactly on top of the other half? So we're looking for the question, how many ways? Then, how many ways can you fold the letter so one half fits exactly on top of the other half? Solve this problem any way you choose. Now, for this square here, one way to do this would be to actually take a post-it note or uh, take a piece of paper and cut one end off so that you make a perfect square and then try it, fold it up, see what happens. But I'm gonna have to visualize it here on my screen. So let's see, let's pretend like um, there was a dotted line right across the middle of the paper and I took the top half and I folded it down. I'd have all my lines lining up. So from top to bottom, that's one way. Then if I did a dotted line from up to down and I took the right hand side of my paper and I folded it over, that would be another way I could make them line up. That would be a second way. So I can fold it vertically or horizontally. But are there any other ways? If I were to draw a dotted line diagonally across the shape and I were to fold one corner down to the other corner, that would be a third way I could fold the square. And then the last one would be if I drew a dotted line down the other way diagonally, I could fold this corner down to this corner and those would line up as well. That would be a fourth way. So how many ways can we fold the square? There'll be four ways. Then it says, how many ways can you fold the letter so that one half fits exactly on top of the other? Well, that one's a little bit different, isn't it? If I were to uh, draw an imaginary line across the middle and I folded the top down, the top doesn't look anything like the bottom half. So that's not gonna be a line of symmetry. What if I drew a line down the center, a vertical line, and I tried to fold the left-hand side over to match up with the right-hand side? Well, the left-hand side doesn't look anything like the right-hand side. That's not going to work. Even if I try to get creative and draw a diagonal line in either direction, those sides don't look like each other either. So how many ways can we fold a letter? It's just zero ways. There are no ways we can um, take this G and fold it up and make them line up. That means that our square has four lines of symmetry and our G has no lines of symmetry. That's what we're looking for today. Okay, so let's uh, jump to the next picture here. It says, what figures can you form when you fold a square in half? Well, let's look back at that uh, square. We folded it four different ways. When we folded the top down, we made a rectangle. And when we folded the side to the other side, we made another rectangle. But when we folded down the corners, we made triangles. So let's jump back over here and we can write our answer together. So I can form rectangles by folding vertically, that means up and down, and horizontally. That's a line that goes across. Our 
I can form triangles. And if you're a pretty mathy geometry person, you know that those are right angle triangles, right triangles. When I fold diagonally, that's when we draw the line and fold across. Hmm, I misspelled it. Let's fix it. Diagonally. Not diagonally, right? All right. Let's scoot on over to the next page. You're going to be doing the visual learning part of the lesson with the Pearson video. So you're going to go do that. Um, down at the bottom of that visual learning video, though, let's do that convince me together. It says, find two capital letters that have exactly one line of symmetry. That's the first thing we need to do. Then it says, find two capital letters that have exactly two lines of symmetry. That's the second thing we're going to need to do. All right? So, um... I guess I could just start trying to think of letters, but to be honest, to me, it's easier to kind of go straight down the list. So I'm going to make a little T-chart over here on the side. And so this is going to be the side where um, they have one line of symmetry, and this will be the side where they have exactly two lines of symmetry. And I can add letters to my... Uh, t-chart as we go. So let me get a color over here. Let's just start looking at letters, right? A line of symmetry means that it, they're like mirror images of each other, the two sides. So like the letter A, the left side and the right side look exactly the same. If I were to fold this down the middle, this looks like a mirror image of this. Now the top doesn't look like the bottom. The bottom splits off in two parts and the top is a, a like an angle, a corner, right? So this one only has one line of symmetry, just a vertical line of symmetry and the two sides match. Let's try B. Because it depends on how I draw it, doesn't it? Let me try this again. Depending on how I draw this B, Let's see. What if I were to draw a line from top to bottom? Does the left look exactly like the right? No way. The left has this long line, and the right has these two bumps. So that's not going to work. What about if I drew a horizontal line? Does the top look just like the bottom? Yes. If I were to fold the top over, the two bumps of the bees would line up. This is another one with exactly one line of symmetry. Let's try C. Now C, if I were to draw a line straight up and down, a vertical line, the left and the right do not match. One's open and one's not. But what if I drew a horizontal line? The top and the bottom are mirror images of each other. They look just alike. So this is another one with just one line. Well, I only needed to find two with just one line, so I'm kind of done. I'm still looking for one that has exactly two lines of symmetry. Let's keep going. Let's try uh, D. Well, D is going to work uh, if I do a horizontal line. The top and the bottom will match. But the left and the right won't match if I do a vertical line of symmetry. So that's not going to work. I don't want to use D. What about E? This is another one where if I draw a vertical line, it won't work. But if I draw a horizontal line, it will work. So that's just one line of symmetry. Oh my goodness. Maybe I should start thinking of ones that will work. E, F, G, H. I have a good feeling about H. Let's look at H. Let's try it. If I were to draw a vertical line, do the left and the right look like mirror images? 
Absolutely. They look identical. Like, like half of your H is looking in the mirror at the other half. What about if I drew a horizontal line of symmetry? Does the top half look just like the bottom half? Yes, the top half looks like a open square, right? And the bottom half looks like an open square. Yeah, this is one with two lines of symmetry. So I'm going to put H under my two lines of symmetry over here. I'm going to make some room over here by erasing. All right, let's see what we can do now. I need to find more letters that have two lines of symmetry. H, I, how about, let's try I. Because we have to do capital letters. What if I drew a vertical line, that's tough, of symmetry. Do the two sides match? Yes, both sides just look like two lines, right? Sticking off of either side. That one works. What if I did a horizontal line of symmetry? Yes, the top would kind of look like a T and the bottom would kind of look like an, un, an upside down T. So I is another one with two lines of symmetry. I found my two capital letters with two lines of symmetry. You could go all the way through the alphabet. Some have none, some have two, some have one. It's pretty fun to do actually. Let's keep rolling. All right, for our guided practice today, that's the part where I guide you through the problems. We're gonna start with, do you understand? Number one says, how many lines of symmetry does the letter R have? Well, I definitely have to look at the letter R to be able to tell. All right. First, I just start like trying to draw lines and see if it works. If I cut it down the middle, the two sides, the left and the right, definitely don't match. What if I cut it across the middle? The top and the bottom definitely don't match. I could look to see if diagonal lines would work, but that's not going to work either. It's, no, no way. So I'm going to have to say that the letter R has zero or a none. No lines of symmetry. Let's look at number two. It says, how many lines of symmetry does the figure have below? Well, let's check it out. I just like to start trying it out. Let's cut from top to bottom. Are the left and right sides of this perfect perfect mirror images? If I took the left and folded it over to the right, would they line up? Yes, that's one. That's one way for sure. Let's try another way. What if I cut it across the middle? Does the top half match the bottom half? Would they line up? No, if I folded the top half down to the bottom, there would be like a rectangle sticking down in the middle, right? That would definitely not work. Um, I'm going to erase all this, and I'm going to try a diagonal one just to see. If I cut it this way, would they match? It might be close, but it's really not. I mean, there are two bumps, but this whole thing is different on that side. No, I think this one only has one line of symmetry. It's a vertical line of symmetry, like when you cut it straight up the middle. Remember that vertical line of symmetry? All right, let's look at number three. How many lines of symmetry can you find for a circle? Let's check it out. Let's draw a circle. It's really tough to draw a good one, but I'm going to do my best. Not so bad. All right, what if I cut it vertically? Do the two sides match? Absolutely. What if I cut it horizontally across the middle? Do the top and the bottom match? Absolutely. What if I did a diagonal cut? Do the two sides match? Absolutely. What if I do a diagonal cut the other way? Do they match? Absolutely. Now let's get creative. What if I cut it in between some of these cuts? Do those work? Yeah, those are still symmetrical. What if I cut those lines? What about like this cut? Would that cut work? Would this cut work? How many lines of symmetry do you think there are? 
I could keep drawing lines on this circle. And as long as they passed through the center of the circle, they would all be lines of symmetry. I could fold this circle an infinite number of ways, and it is always going to be symmetrical so long as I continue to fold through the center of the circle. So how many lines of symmetry? There is an infinite, it looks like infinite, an infinite number of lines of symmetry for a circle. Can I count them? No, I can't count to infinity. I could count my entire life and I would die before I ever got to infinity. So no, we really can't count them. Let's look over here at do you know how. Let's look for number uh, four and five. We're going to tell if each line is a line of symmetry. Okay. So for number four, they gave us the line of symmetry already. So we have to pretend like we're folding the top part of this shape down to cover the bottom part of this shape. Would they be mirror images of each other? Would they line up perfectly? Well, it's tempting to say yes because the rectangle, the outside line of the rectangle would be symmetrical, but we can't discount or not count this inner part of the rectangle. Is there a big space cut out of the bottom half of the rectangle? No, no. The top and the bottom are not identical mirror images of each other. So this one is no, it's not a line of symmetry. Let's look at number five. They drew a horizontal line. So we have to pretend like we're taking the top of the shape and folding it down. Would the top perfectly line up with the bottom? Would the bottom disappear beneath the top fold? Well, I have this sticky outy part and this sticky outy part. I've got this body part and this body part and they match. Yes, this one is a line of symmetry. They would line up perfectly. Let's look for uh, the next section where it says six and seven. Tell how many lines of symmetry each figure has. Well, all right, let's try it out. I always like to start by cutting it up the middle. So let's do a vertical line of symmetry up and down. Is the left side exactly a mirror image of the right side? If I folded the left over to the right, would they line up? Yes. Yes, it would. Okay, let's try another line of symmetry. If I cut this one up the center, would the top and the bottom match perfectly? Well, no this time because the whole middle part of the H is above the line, not below the line. So while this part and this part would line up, this middle part would not line up with the bottom. So this one only has one line of symmetry. I could try to get creative and start drawing some diagonal lines, but I really don't think that's going to do the trick for me either, will it? Because if I drew a diagonal line here, look how much of the middle is on one side of the line. It's just not going to come out right. So only one. Let's take a look at number seven. If I drew a, this is hard, let's see, I drew a vertical line of symmetry and I folded this side over to this side, would they line up? No, this would be something like this. I don't know. It definitely wouldn't line up with the stuff on the right hand side. So that's not going to work. What if we drew a horizontal line of symmetry? Well, if I folded this top part down, I would end up, I don't even know how to draw it, but I would end up with something along like that line, right? Oh, it would be over here. And that's not what's happening. So no horizontal line of symmetry won't do it either. What if we tried to do some sort of a diagonal line? Would that do it? No, if I did it like this, part of them, they stick out a lot and part this side looks a little more narrow. That's not gonna work. This one has no lines of symmetry. Okay, so that's the end of our guided practice today. So uh, you're going to be 
working um, on the independent practice on your own. So for sections 8 and ele through 11, I'm sorry, 8 through 11, for numbers 8 through 11, you're going to be telling if each line that they drew for you is a line of symmetry. So these are kind of like yes and no answers. And then for 12 through 19, you're going to decide if each figure is what's called line symmetric. Line symmetric is an adjective that describes any figure that has a line of symmetry, at least one line of symmetry. So you'll draw the lines of symmetry just like I did for you or just like um, they did above up here. And you'll tell how many lines of symmetry each figure has. Okay? Um, so that's kind of like a two-part problem. So let's draw the lines and tell how many lines. So don't forget to do both parts of that. Um, there are some word problems on the back of the page for independent practice. So make sure that you do those as well. I think you're going to be doing even problems today for your independent practice. So uh, good luck with that.